So the usual place where you start teaching Unix is standard in, standard out, and standard error. Um, we don't have those concepts. And before you uh, get judgmental, um, this is supposed to be a souped up modern Commodore 64. So what could possibly be good about a Commodore 64? Let's see, do this. We're at the command line. Okay, so standard in, standard out, standard error. Big whoop. Okay, we're not into that. We Those are for scientific, academic, uh, terminal programs. Um, our goal is to be something fun to hack, like, for example, uh, a typical thing you did with a Commodore was, uh, fonts. They did character graphics. Here's, this is the font. You can play with the binary numbers. I made a font editor. You can play with that. Um, some of you kids have never seen a font editor. Um, so, you pick a character, I'm not, let's not do one that gets important, um, how about Z? Anyway, so, uh, you, so when we're done, I think I hit escape and it stored it. Anyway, um. Let's go to my home directory. Okay, so it stored it. So, um, what can we do with this? Let's turn it into a program. U8 uh, star. Oops. I hit. <laughs> I got God. Okay. This is supposed to be a U64 uh, F. 256 equals so this is an array of named F okay so let's include that and now let's say uh, text dot font let's, let's put a Z on the screen first okay there's a Z um, I don't know if you can see it. We're going to, uh, we're going to say, uh, text. Okay, just to show you how I'm finding this. In the text layer, I, okay, it's not here. In the, uh, my birds are. In the graphics routines, um, There, I want to look for a global variable. GR globals. Okay, so GR, GR, and then it's font is what it's called. This is this is a global variable class, and uh oh, I don't see font. I think it's called text, to be quite honest. I think I was right before. Anyway, um, you should get from it. You don't use the man page. You use F1, and then it goes to an index, and uh, it's a really nice index. And there's a there's help on standard in and standard out. Anyway, uh, we don't. We don't have those technically. Um, oh, I know what it is. I'm in the wrong spot. It's a char. There's text is a global variable, and this is the type font. Okay. So we included. Let's do a who. This tells us the symbols that are defined in this. These are like environment variables. Okay. 
uh, who minus r. Okay, so f. So we say uh, text font. Let's put a z on the screen. That's the character we changed. Now we say uh, text font equals f. Okay, now did our z get modified? We have to zoom in. Um, there's a any any time at any place you can you can hit Control Alt Z and um, we zoom in and look at that. There's a different character. Control Alt Shift Z. So what so what have we what have we accomplished here? So we have here a file that um, we can uh, we can change the uh, symbols. Um, we could use the editor or uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna corrupt the uh, the zero. Let's let's do an overwrite. Okay, so there's gonna be a bunch of so I'm gonna include that again, and then I'm gonna say text dot font equals f, and now all the zeros are uh, corrupted. So how do we fix this? Reboot. Bam, we're back. Okay. So, um, uh, this is the thing, this is what you did with the Commodore 64. So, is there a standard in, standard out? Well, sort of. Um, as a matter of fact, um, there's some very nice uh, mainframe... Uh, Let's say you have i equals get. Well, let's let's look. Let's use the. Let's do this. F1 standard in, and we have get get i64 get f64 get date get char. Okay, so if we if we want. in equals get i64. Now, I do believe this is a very fancy um, routine. Okay, so uh, message default min max. Okay, so we say uh, enter in message default zero min max okay we don't we don't even want those now we say for uh, let's say for uh, i equals 1 i less or equal to, less or equal to n i plus plus percent d i okay so watch what happens we hit f5 to run it so this is standard in enter n now this should be this is a fancy like ultra deluxe mainframe one plus two times six. So the when you ask for an integer, it allows the user to enter a uh, a holy see expression. So uh, these are uh, so that's very nice, very easy, very nice. Um, let's do a magic, let's do a black rectangle. That's the classic hardest pro problem. So we want to look F1, graphics routines, uh, I do believe the triangle is technically kind of, uh, ghetto. It does, I don't think it has clipping. Returns count of pixels changed. If it has a zero, that's kind of like version zero. I don't know what you want to call it. Zero has no clipping and it's raw. Um, three is three dimensional and it has, there's kind of uh, three categories of uh, graphics routines. 
uh, there's a uh, if it has a zero that means there's no guard rail and if you go off the map you're gonna possibly corrupt something if it has no number then it's it's probably a two-dimensional uh, no clip no pen width and then there's the ultra ultra deluxe which is three dimensions and it has a pen width and a transform so basically, uh, those are your th three choices. So we want to, uh, what I recommend is uh, use, you use the autocomplete to jump to the source code. That's, did I say there's not a man page? Anyway, uh, and I like to uh, just copy onto the clipboard and then copy it and then use it as a, uh, Sometimes you can examine it when you're doing working on something. Anyway, so we want uh, so to use this triangle to make to draw a black triangle, we have to define P1, P2, and P3. Let's set uh, P1x equals 100, P1.y equals 100, P1.z equals zero. P2.x equals 200. P2.y equals 100. P2.z equals 0. P3.x equals, uh, let's say, 150. P3.y equals, uh, let's say, 200. Missing semicolon. Oh. Okay, we we can p3 dot z equals zero, and now we look at the gr fill triangle. The color is set to black at the moment. Uh, the we want the default. We want the persistent layer, which is p4. Okay, so that's how easy it is to put a, a black rectangle. Um, you want to know you're gonna you're going to worry about standard in, standard out. This is a souped-up Commodore 64. You say, why would you want a Commodore 64? Now you know. Anyway, so uh, you say DC fill. It's it's uh, it's actually uh, it's actually so. There's all kinds of deluxe. Uh, I I I have the uh, just in time compiler um, so easy to use that I use it everywhere. Every little thing is the just in time compiler. As a matter of fact, if we want to make this a uh, red. And the, let's make the first letter E red. So red for foreground that sets it back to the default foreground. We set it to red, and then we set it to the default. So when we run this, we get a red E, and uh, so we say one, two, and we got three. Okay. Now this will blow your mind. So uh, red is. Uh, Red is a color. Okay. Now the uh, the escape document. Uh, let's do pur purple is thirteen. Okay. Let's do foreground comma six plus seven. So the document the document commands can have expressions. Um, uh, I'm kind of, I lost you, didn't I? Oh, well, just take my word for it. They can have expressions. Um, what's a better example? Oh, this. Anyway, there's a document. The documents can have sprites. Uh, 
for example let's make a sprite control R make sprite and escape we keep we do want the tag and uh, let's do poly poly point let's do width five dither color the dither color works that's not the dither color I was expecting let's delete that and dither color I thought it let's do that purple exit okay so what can we do standard in and standard out okay um, no we don't really have standard in standard out sorry as a matter of fact these are not serialized uh, what does that mean that means when it hits this command it says well let's run it first five okay so we printed uh, five sprites I'm gonna I'm gonna separate them out by coming in here and okay so there's all these sprites anyway so um, these are uh, like I could serialize them but uh, that wasn't an option uh, now I have the ability to uh, convert them to text so the polyline thing is a series of directional movements by one anyway uh, poly point uh, to make a long story short uh, these are these are stored as a raw binary uh, I guess you could call it byte co byte code it's vector we can convert it to bitmap um, convert to bitmap <coughs> transparent background use these extents okay now it is it has been converted to a bitmap so now we have a uh, we have a file it ends in dot z so it's compressed if we say dump test I do believe it will search for the dot z so you can see a bitmap here in this text file that's because our our files are are pretty much ASCII but um, the files are ASCII followed by binary graphics uh, so uh, I explain to people it's a little bit like a PDF just imagine your compiler your C compiler worked on PDF um, so anyway uh, so uh, let me go over one of the neat features that's I want to convert you so that you appreciate what we gain by losing standard in and standard out so we go to uh, okay I this is a uh, if you're doing a form uh, there's a metadata for uh, for uh, 
it's basically a, a nasty format you have to learn and uh, once you do that then you can enter forms but the nice thing is you don't have a separate resource file that was my goal and menu menu sprite okay look at this program we have a sprite we have a while loop so I think we're gonna stay doing this we print our sprite and this is a I do believe uh, this sprite has a payload of a we make the sprite so you can click on it and the left expression is 50 remember I said we can have it invokes a compiler really quickly on and off so each of these little things is compiled now the crazy the crazy thing is you can put uh, expressions like i64x and then you can put x into these expressions x plus 50 it's the crazy stuff like that that's because um, the task has a symbol table and once it stores that symbol then the compiler uh, all those environment variables are uh, in scope so uh, I should explain uh, how you normally make use of this I'll go ahead and getting a little bit sidetracked we're gonna go to the sprite editing code and uh, I made some defines and then I made a menu and I put those defines as the left expression when you click it that's the left expression so that's what I was that's what I was trying to explain um, you can make uh, the 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 line between resource and program and compile time and runtime it's um, I'm the only one that understands anyway uh, so let's run this so that little program made a uh, that made a menu menu with uh, a sprite so it has an icon we call those icons if you if it's a sprite that you can click on it's an icon and what did we do we got the value in Hertz and if it was greater than zero we set the sound sound is that easy to make you saw how easy it was to do a circle this you want to know how easy it is to do a sound if, it's a frequency uh, VMware finally gave us sound again they took it away what they gave us is kind of uh, laughably distorted like the original PC speaker um, QEMU has no distortion and it sounds bad VMware for some reason they went crazy and uh, it sounds good when you um, when you do a uh, sounds good for sound effects but it's too much distortion for everything else anyway so uh, let's do menu buttons okay so um, basically our resource file is uh, there's not a separate resource file you um, we don't have uh, windows we have text widgets so if we hit F5 so we have a menu we can turn the sound on sound off set frequency 200 sound on okay so this it's that easy to make a, uh, a menu my goal was to have minimum uh, changing files I don't like little files that you have to jump between 
so I, I made the resources right in the code and uh, I like it uh, I don't like to have a lot of options so I made it beautifully simple but it's it, Anyway, so uh, that's what I wanted to show.